Today we're talking monitors, how to do triples and beyond. Stick around. So today let's take a look at triple monitors. First, why would you even want triple monitors? Why do I need one, two, three, four, five monitors? Well, first of all, let's look at a simple screenshot here. So if I was looking at one monitor, my single screen, it's a 24 inch screen, at the correct field of view, which you see here, cutting off the side monitors, effectively I see out my front windshield and only about, let's say 75% of that front windshield. I have no visibility left, I have no visibility right. Now, of course, most games do give you a button. I can hit a button on the keyboard or maybe the steering wheel to look left, but that's not always convenient. And it's somewhat disorienting to see the whole camera swap sideways and swap back. Um, so to me, that's not really a good option. So now let's look at three monitors. All of a sudden, our field of view expands. Now, our, our, field, our true field of view did not change. As you notice, the middle screen is still the same. Nothing's changed. But I've gained a whole side of the left side of the car. I've gained a whole view of the right side of the car. Now look what's popped up. A truck in our right side view. Now, if I was having spotter difficulties, or maybe I just wasn't listening or paying attention on one monitor, I could not see that truck right there. So this is the number one advantage to three monitors, especially when it comes to sim racing, is view. It's all about what we can see and how well we can see it. So to discuss a baseline, I'm running five 1080p screens on a i7-3770 processor with a GTX 1070 GPU at eight gigabytes. So by no means am I running a supercomputer but I have a moderately powerful processor paired with a one generation old uh, mid-level GPU. A good rule of thumb when planning for triple monitors, if you're struggling with one screen to push 60 to 80 frames per second at your desired level of graphics on your desired games that you play, there's no way you're going to be able to push even three monitors at 1080p at 60 or above. Now, if you can be running those settings on your desired games and you're running 100, 110, 120 frames per second, then I would say you have a good entry level PC that you should be able to step up to a three screen 1080p setup. However, if you plan at gaming at 1440 or a full 4K resolution, you're definitely going to have to check your hardware specs and do a little research because you may have to do some upgrades to get to that level. Now, my setup. I could probably step up to a 1440 refresh rate and drop my expectation for frames per second down to about 60, and I could probably do that on a 1070 card. But I, I would, but I would say that's definitely an entry level, and I would be hitting minimums. There's no way my card could push three times 4K, so I would definitely need an upgrade if I ever look at at doing 4K resolution. I would say for 4K, you're definitely gonna wanna be looking at the latest cards at the upper tier. So I'd be looking at the RTX line of the NVIDIAs, say a 2060 Super, a 2070, or a 2080 if I could get my hands on it. So other than just throwing fancy graphics card numbers around, let's look at the back of the card. Regardless what model you have, let's see what your card is capable of. You're gonna wanna check your ports, what type of port you have, and how many do you have. Most older cards, are gonna support probably two. Most up-to-date modern mid-level cards can probably support three. And then your upper mid-level to high tier cards are gonna support three, four, or five. So today we're gonna to reference the GTX 1070 since that's what's in my machine. So as for ports, the 1070 has three display ports, one HDMI and one DVID. So I use the display ports from my main three racing screens as that gives the best quality connection. I use the HDMI for my 19 inch support screen and then I use the, the older DVI-D for the Raspberry Pi screen uh, through a, an adapter from HDMI to DVI-D uh, since it's the oldest connection and the least important. Types of connection is pretty much irregardless as long as your monitor has the uh, correct port that can match up and or uh, the correct adapter is available on the market, you can use any port available uh, on your card. We'll save the how-to of the next tip for another video, but if your card only offers three ports and you are looking to expand to a fourth support monitor in the future, 
if your computer has integrated graphics on the motherboard, you can go into your BIOS and turn that on to be able to use that alongside of your GPU. You could then plug a fourth monitor into your integrated graphics port and run four monitors. Now, I definitely wouldn't recommend using that integrated graphics port as a gaming monitor. The integrated graphics does not pack anywhere near the gaming potential as your GPU. Uh, and it's also going to strain your CPU. So you want to run limited information uh, through that port. At this point, we've identified your CPU and GPU are at minimum three monitor ready. So go ahead and get your cables, get your adapters, and get everything plugged in. And let's turn our computer back on and set up triple monitor racing. Now I'm running Windows 7, so yours may look a little different. But let's right click on the desktop and go to screen resolution. And then you're already going to see my monitors show up here, but because it's remembered them, but typically you only see your first monitor. So you want to go up and hit detect. And then at that time, your monitors should pop up. So now you'll see that all five of my monitors are showing up. So in your case, you'd see three if we're doing the initial three. From here, go down and make sure your monitors are set to extend desktop to this display. Check your resolution and adjust if required. Typically that's not needed. Make sure you go to every monitor and, and check your settings. And then from there, we'll hit OK and close this window. So from there, we're going to go back to the desktop, right click and open the NVIDIA control panel. From here, it's already selected. You'll want to go make sure you're on the Configure Surround PhysX panel. Then we'll go over and select the correct GPU from the pull-down list. Now, I only have one GPU, so I don't have to select anything. It's the only GPU I got. And then we'll select Span Displays with Surround. From here, we want to go to Configure. Now, most of these settings under Configure, we won't have to adjust, but you can see that we're on a 1x3 setup. You can select the displays that you want it to surround to. Our resolution will be 5760 by 1080 and we're running 60 hertz monitors. Now, if you had variable hertz, you could select something different. And then you can also do bezel correction, but for now, we'll take care of that in game. So from here, select enable surround. So once your monitors are done refreshing, you can close all the NVIDIA control panels and you should be left with a single surrounded monitor. Now, since my background is black, I'm going to change my background picture to give you a better image of what this new screen actually looks like. So here you can see our new 5780 wide resolution. So now that the monitor setup is done, let's open a web browser and launch the iRacing software. And we're going to go adjust our in-game settings for iRacing in this video. So we have to do that in-game. So we're just going to open the service and open a test race and go into a test lobby and then we'll update the settings from there. So once iRacing launches, we want to go up to the options tab. I want to go over to graphics. And then if you don't already, I recommend running in full screen. Uh, you can run in full screen or windowed with border. Um, I prefer full screen in anything I run. Uh, now that you're running three monitors, if it hasn't auto updated, come down and check 5760 by 1080. Now mine will show 60 because I'm at 60 Hertz. Uh, you'll have additional options here if you're running at something else or if you have variable. Uh, UI zoom is just the zoom level of the windows and stuff yourself. It has nothing to do with your screens. Uh, multiple GPU support. If you are running SLI, you can select that here. Number of screens. We want to go from one to three. And then we'll turn on multi-projection. So what that does is render each screen separately. Uh, you can play with SMP and SPS. Um, it's too much to explain right now, but... Um, it's just another way of rendering each screen. Um, you can play with those to see if it uh, helps or hurts your FPS. Uh, as far as graphics in general, uh, the next thing to talk about uh, while we're in here is field of view. So iRacing will calculate your field of view for you using this calculator. So you enter first the total width from outside edge to outside edge of your monitor, including the bezel. Uh, then the inside edge to inside edge of just your screen, then your viewing distance from your eye to the screen, your angle that your outside screens are to your middle, and then it will calculate this number and set your car view to this. So I have a 24 inch screen, so those are my measurements for a 24 inch screen. I sit 20 inches away at 45 degree angle, so I have a 157, and then that makes what I see as lifelike as possible. From there, as far as graphics, uh, I play with it depending on what car I'm running, but typically for a race, I will lower some of the 
uh, quality settings uh, for things that I don't really pay attention to or see in the race just to maximize uh, FPS and smoothness and then I will limit mine uh, just to give the CPU a break. Um, from there it doesn't really matter. The other good thing uh, for iRacing is you can set your replay settings separately so I max those out so if I want to share a video or go back and watch the replay I am watching all the fully detailed track, cars, pits um, and take full advantage of that so the replays are a little more interactive and, and more real life. I highly recommend the Flexi Mount brand. I'm using them on my rig. They come in a few variations. This is the single mount for a single monitor. In the center, I'm running a double mount, which has the upper and lower mounts on one post. So the advantage these give you is now I'm able to adjust all four main screens individually. They can all go up, down, in, out, rotate as needed to get a perfect alignment or adjust for future needs. Different wheels, different drivers, I can adjust as needed. If you have an issue getting into the rig, I can simply push this one out of the way. If I need to adjust to remove it, I can move it down, up, and turn all very easily. This ensures that I, gotta, I get a good gap a good seal and a good alignment on the monitors so that I get the best viewpoint. Thanks for watching guys and always if you like the video please give it a like, share, subscribe and we'll see you next time.